Let's get reaction now from international trends forecaster Gerald Salenti. Gerald, how spontaneous are these protests? Did Erdogan see this coming, do you think? No, I don't think anyone saw them coming. And I believe that the protests are legitimate concerning they're putting up a supermarket and barracks on their beloved square. So I, I think it began like that, but I think the tension, obviously, the tension has been building for a variety of reasons. But does it really constitute an uprising? Because this is a small fraction of the Turkish uh, population, isn't it? And some people are talking about a Turkish spring. Is that an exaggeration or could that be true? Well, I, I don't know if it'll be a Turkish spring, but let's look at some of the facts behind this be besides the the uh, shopping mall that's supposedly going to be built. Uh, the inequality level. Among the OECD nations, Turkey's inequality ranks third in the bottom, just behind Mexico and, of course, the United States, the most unequal country. Then there's the Syrian conflict that's going on. A lot of people are against Turkey's involvement in it, particularly as Turkey moves toward more of an Islamization as we saw with the recent uh, calls for restrictions on alcohol, but let alone that only 6% of the people in Turkey are perceived to drink alcohol. And, and so there are a number of other underlying facts, particularly also the prime minister's pension to hold on to office. He's already had three terms under the terms of his party. That's the limit. But he's made no bones about it that he's going for a fourth. And, of course, there's certainly plenty of popularity for him. He's an elected uh, prime minister. So the protesters' demands, then, in effect, are undemocratic, aren't they? Well, yes, but, again, th what they're saying is that they're having things forced down them without a say in, in matters. And, by the way, this goes on in every country. I mean, you could talk about police brutality. You know, name your place. I remember what happened over here in the States, you know, at the, uh, the G20 meetings in Pittsburgh or, or the battle in Seattle or what went on in Nottingham uh, in the UK a few years ago. So the, the police brutality is nothing new. But I think there's more of an under, undergrowing current. For example, 20 percent of the, the Turkish population is the uh, Alevi uh, sect. And they're naming that new bridge after an Ottoman sultan that wiped out tens of thousands of them. So you can clearly see that the prime minister is making his own enemies. And what about the aspect of the military then, Gerald? Because they've been very quiet in this. And could there be a chance that military could move in if they feel that he's getting out of control, losing control? Well, absolutely. And that, by the way, is also a, a remarkable new twist in Turkish politics, is that this is between the government and the people, not the government and the military. And remember, again, the people that are rebelling against this, these are very middle-class secular. They, you know, this isn't a radical fringe element, as the uh, prime minister says. You know, he said that that these are, they're standing tall against those people that are hand in hand with terrorism. I mean, this is not a terrorist group. So, and it's, it is interesting that the military is not involved at this point. And again, the economy, you know, that's really a key issue over here. You know, after the prime minister's uncompromising speech today, you saw the Turkish stock exchange fall some 8%. And his GDP is plummeting from last year's. So there are a lot of underlying causes behind this. But this couldn't really happen at the worst time in the region, could it? Could there be any regional implications on what's happening with Turkey's domestic situation? You know, that's a very important question you asked. You know, something, we, there's this tendency to so-called wag the dog, where other events overshadow the domestic events. And that event may be not right next door with Syria. As we're hearing more and more calls, for example, just from France uh, two days ago, that Syria is using chemical weapons. So we may see a great distraction, and it may be in Syria. And, Gerald, finally, Erdogan, he's coming back tonight to face all the crisis in his country. What's he going to do, do you think? What's the next stage? I think you're going to see a crackdown on the demonstrators. He's already made it clear that there won't be any compromising that the so-called shopping mall and the barracks are going up, and that he still regards these people as terrorists. So I, I think you're going to see a hard line.
Gerald, really interesting to hear your point of view on this. Thank you very much indeed, international trends forecaster. Gerald Salenti, live here on RT. Thanks a lot. Thank you.